Hi everybody, Paul Cameron here from speedupmyjobsearch.com with a clip from our monthly jobs driven networking group, which meets every third Thursday. Let's take a look. We're going to talk about company culture here today from both sides of the desk. This is a very hot topic given the culture of America right now and the, uh, everybody being so open about their very strong beliefs about a lot of different things uh, and how that might translate going into the workplace. What I'm seeing from the recruiting side, from the hiring side on this, is that this is this is talked about a lot from the client side. When I talk to a company, they they're looking for the right cultural fit, but it's almost never talked about by the the candidates. Rarely do people ask, you know, what's the culture, you know, like there? What's the environment? What's the the management style of this particular uh, hiring manager? Uh, those types of questions almost never talked about. You know, I'll give you just kind of an example of what I mean here. If Micah drives down, you know, take it or leave it, probably revealing too much here. But um, for me, in my environments, I don't see a need to use foul language at the office. Um, I know some places that's, you know, dropping F-bombs is like part of their accent, you know, <laughs> and that's fine. I mean, you know, no problem with that. No, you know, angst with people who, who do swear a lot. Great. Uh, it's just not a thing uh, in my office. And if that makes you uncomfortable not to be able to um, talk how you would normally talk, you're not going to like working in my office. Um, likewise, uh, if you just go ahead and do it anyway, um, I'm going to be uncomfortable having you there. So looking at it from both sides there, if, if an employee is not okay with that particular policy or if the company is not okay with that language, whose responsibility is it to change? Who's supposed to, to accommodate the other? Does the, the employee have to change who they are and how they communicate with others? Or does the company have to change their policy because that one person now works there? And I'll give you a, a, an interesting perspective uh, on this. There is a book, uh, I ironically enough, that uh, is filled with some, some language that I wasn't comfortable with, but it was a good book. But she had a really interesting thought on this of, you know, when you're, you're looking at, say, a movie, two people go to a movie, and I'm just going to quote right out of her book here. Uh, two people can walk out of the same movie, one person, you know, clinging to the walls and bloodshot and devastated, leaving a trail of tissue, more moved by this film than any other film in the history of cinema. Whereas the other person goes marching up to the ticket counter and demands their money back because she thought this was the worst piece of garbage to ever be projected onto a screen, right? Same movie, should the movie rewrite their plot or should the patron change their interests, right? It's, a, it's one movie, two very different experiences. Why is that? Well, because it's not about the movie. It's about the movie goers and the experiences that they have been through that brought them into this place where they are now. Right? That doesn't necessarily mean that they have to change the plot. It means you know, we need to go to movies that we'd be interested in and the movie goer and the movie showers need to show it to, to patrons that would have an interest, if that makes sense. It's the same way for the you know employers. Two different people walk into the same meeting but they walk out with two very different experiences. One guy walks out saying, hey, I love my job. And the other person is tell me again well, how lucky I am to work here. I, I keep forgetting, right? Same, same exact meeting, just two different experiences from it because of the, the experiences they brought into the meeting, right? And from what I'm seeing on this side, it's making the job search process so much harder for job seekers because the companies are spending you know, millions of dollars assessing personalities, you know, essentially because they can, you know, the job search process has, has changed a lot over the last, you know, I was going to say 10 years, but even you know, one year, year to year, it's so different. And now they can get those jobs in front of millions of people in seconds, right? So now they've got a choice between personality types. But from the job seekers perspective, when you don't get the offer, the candidate then assumes that, well, I must be missing a, a certification. I'll go get another certification. That'll help me get more offers. Or maybe it's due to my 
you know, location or my, you know, my age or my, the fact that I'm coming out of consulting or all these different things when the reality is you dropped four F-bombs during the interview and that particular company doesn't like that particular language in their office. So culture really plays a much bigger part in the process. So I'm going to try to explore both sides of this. So we'll start with the companies. If you are looking for this information as a candidate, these are tactics that they're now looking at to identify how you would fit in their culture. Number one, best, easiest, most reliable go-to way to find out is asking them why you left your last position and really diving into that. Right? If you read the book uh, uh, Winning by Jack Welch, uh, he says, if I could only ask one question during an interview, this would be it. Why'd you leave your last position? So there's so much information in that one question. And, and he'll dive in, you know, what about the last company before that? And what about your boss and, and about your team? You want to listen very carefully as the employer for comparative words. Right, so I'm looking for a company that has more of this or that. I'm looking for a company that has better, you know, more organized uh, uh, management approach with a nicer this or that with newer technology. Anything that has an er on the end of it, a, a comparison word where I'm comparing what you have, which is wonderful, that also implies my current company doesn't have any of that. And if you notice that as the employer, dig in. I'd immediately go, oh, okay. So more uh, technology on the data warehousing front. Tell me about your, your prior company. Did they not have that? Oh yeah, that company, they didn't have this, this, and this. You know, I'm looking for newer technology they had us working on and they can dive into whatever complaints in the, and grievances they had, which will then tell me a lot about that particular person. So keying in on comparison words will help out a lot as an employer. Spending the time and the money on hiring very well-trained, very personable uh, recruiters and, and HR professionals in there. Some of the best organizations that I work with have the friendliest HR professionals in there. And it's, it's almost to the point where they give, you the, they give you the impression that they're just so just happy-go-lucky uh, people. They're friendly and they want to make friends with you and, and uh, just say, oh, let, me, let me tell you what you need to know about this particular employer. And they're, they're, they're building that rapport with you very quickly. Make no mistake, they are extraordinarily high-level professionals and they are trying to get you to put your guard down to reveal your actual thoughts, your, your actual uh, experiences and, and just to confide in them as a friend because they're just the recruiter, they're just the HR person, but they're reporting directly to the CIO of the organization, the multi-billion dollar global organization. Uh, and, and they're gonna share that information, right? Getting people who have the ability to do that very quickly with people, there it's rare and uh, uh, spending the time and effort to, to find them, seek them out. Um, I found those to be really some of the best, most well-run organizations that I've had the opportunity uh, to work with. We'll keep rolling to the candidate side of this. Uh, start by identifying your culture. So like when I do uh, my, my career mapping uh, coaching for uh, the different IT executives, first thing we talk about is your, your non-negotiables. You know, what are the things that what are the lines you won't cross? Uh, you know, these, these are things that, that you learned, you know, even growing up that are just part of your own core values and things like the, uh, I think many of you have heard me share that story. Uh, when uh, I was growing up in high school, uh, mom took me to McDonald's once and we went and we, we got our order. We drove all the way home and she looked in her, in her purse and noticed that the person behind the counter gave her $1 too much. And without hesitation, we got right back in the car, drove all the way back to give them that one dollar back. Right? That's just a that's a non-negotiable. We don't we don't take money that we didn't earn. Uh, and if it was a mistake, we're going to go and, and fix the problem, kind of a thing. Um, just that ethics and integrity piece of it. 
you know, I'm, I'm not going to cross that line uh, on positions that I would look at. And when you know your own core values, that makes the inter interview process so much easier. Because sometimes they're going to design questions for you that are, are specifically meant to encourage you to say that you would be willing to do something that they wouldn't want to do. And they're going to set you up to uh, perhaps look like you're, you're putting yourself in a bad light during that interview. So, you know, sometimes we've got to do it this way. And I know that's a little gray area ethics wise, but it's just a, it's something that I think is, uh, is important to make sure that we, we close those deals. What do you think about that? Well, if you've already identified that's a non-negotiable for me, it's so much easier for you to then come back and say, you know what, I'm going to be just hard space up on the table here for you. That's, that's not something I'm comfortable doing. You know, if, if we're not going to be honest all the way through the process with our customers, you know, I, maybe I wouldn't be the right person for that particular role, right? And then they're going to come back and say, oh, thank goodness. You know what? You wouldn't believe how many people agree with that. You know, and, and they're trying to find people who won't compromise no matter what. And it's going to relieve a lot of stress during that interview uh, if you've identified your own non-negotiables before you even start the interview. Here's a good question. But, you know, hey, you know, tell me a little bit about your thoughts about the culture here when you first started, right? Not just, hey, tell me about the culture here. Tell me about, you know, what you thought about the culture when you first started. The idea is if you put it in a time frame reference, that will get them focused on the actual culture there versus describing the ideal culture they would like to have there. And then that opens them up to naturally, well, when I first started, it was, and it would be very difficult for them to not continue and say, but then as I got to know the place, it really morphed into, and now you're in a conversation about the actual culture. And you want to listen to the tenor of those words. You know, if uh, you're, you're working with a customer, tell me about a time when you had to help a customer to blah, blah, blah. Tell me about a time when you had to deal with a customer who, or how did you handle a customer who, it's the same question. But that word of how did you help the customer versus how did you deal with that customer versus how did you handle that customer tells you a lot about their attitude towards customers. Finishing your answers with confirmation questions so you can start conversations. Um, the best way to build rapport during an interview is to make it a conversation instead of this you know, question answer interrogation kind of a feel. And if you can, you can say, yeah, yeah, I did work on that. And here's how we did it. Is that how you guys approach it? And well, here we do this, this, and this. Oh, yeah, that's similar. I saw that once over it. And now you've got an opportunity to capitalize versus how do you approach this? Well, the way you do that is step one, step two, step three. Nope, that's not how we do it. This guy's not a fit. I hope that was helpful for you. And please check out the rest of our YouTube channel for more tips and strategies to help you with your job search. I'd love to meet you at the next one, so I hope you can make it. Thanks for watching.